You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Sword Art Online After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Sword Art Online After Show. Hey there, AfterBuzz fans. We are here to talk about Sword Art Online today. Look at how shiny it is. For those of you uh, watching on YouTube, you can see right here we've got the opening playing in the studio. Oh, I'm seeing this version again. Oh, yeah. It's a good, it's a good version, though. Um, and for those of you unfortunately listening, you can't see it, but it looks awesome. <laughs> it does. I love when we do this. It's like it's a TV so cool. or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Technology. <laughs> It's really great. I'm your host, Megan Salinas. Joining me on the panel today is Katie Cullen. Hi, all my buddies. Liz Rishmawi. Hey, guys. And Tari Miller. Gumbody Mus. How do you do that? <laughs> it's fantastic. Still Gumbody Mus. <laughs> I'm going to sound like Happy. little trunks from like Dragon Ball Z when I do it. So. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> Just let you know, I can't do it that low. <laughs> <laughs> I want to... You need you need a catchphrase every week. It's great. Uh, we should well, all get catchphrases. It'll be wonderful. It. Before we get started today, I want to go ahead and talk to you real quick about uh, Maria Menudis' new book, The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness. Woo! It's got tons and tons of recipes and how-tos for um, exercise guides if you're looking to, uh, um, to go on a diet, if you're, or less to go on a diet if you're looking just to kind of change your lifestyle to just sort of get a little healthier, get yourself in shape. This is a great step in the right direction. It's got lots and lots of really good recipes and tips um, that can help you out. Also, just want to point out for anybody who isn't watching on YouTube, if you haven't ever seen Marina Menuno, she's got some like wicked abs. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. if you even want anything relatively close to that, you should pick it up. Yeah, it's a good read. <laughs> yep. And while we're on the subject of plugging things, we're going to go ahead and talk to you at iTunes real quick. It, guys, yes. if you like what we do, please go to iTunes you, and uh, rate and comment. Let us know what you think of the show. Uh, let us know that we're doing a good job. It's it's how we let our bosses know that you guys like the, the content that we're putting on. And make sure so. that we, uh, we're we going to keep on recapping some great anime shows as well. So rate us five stars. Five stars. <laughs> Give us yeah. five stars five because stars. you love us. Yes. yes. Anyway, let's go ahead and word. dive into this week's episode, <laughs> The Illusionary Avenger. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Last week we, we had murder this. in the safe zone, and murder. now we have Illusionary Avenger. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Colonel Mustard. <laughs> yeah, last week um, we With had a, a murder in the village. <laughs> With the nerve gear? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's been killing people this whole That's time. That's true. The microwave. That's true. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, last week we had a murder mystery episode, and this week it kind of took a left turn from murder mystery into straight up horror slash thriller genre. So uh, we had a shift at some point in the episode, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the episode starts off where we left off, with Yoko getting stabbed through the open window and falling to her death. Was her name Yo Yoko or Yuriko? I Yo thought her name it's was Yuriko. Like Yo Yolko? It's, yeah, it's, it's like spelled Y-O-L-K-O, but, uh, um, but they pronounce it with an Yorko. R. Yeah. Yeah. Yorko. Yorko. Japanese! <laughs> yeah, my favorite thing I have to point out, and again, I wasn't here last week to comment on this because migraines suck, but uh, I, I just love how in like every single anime, or just animation in general, that you look beautiful when you die. It's like this, uh, and then the hair flies up, and it's just, no, and it's just like this baby pie, and they just like fall into the abyss, and it's just my favorite part when people die in anime. So, it's, unless you're watching Attack on Titan. Yeah, it looks uh, yeah. like, we just came from the Attack yeah. on Titan panel. It's a lot less glamorous. Okay, but aside from that, like just the hair, like, uh, like just, what movies in 
general, movies and TV in general, people look pretty darn good when they yeah. die. <laughs> but not that's not always the case. But anyway, Kiri, uh, Kirito uh, jumps right into action, and uh, after he sees her disappear into the blue polygons, um, he sees somebody in a black coat on another rooftop, and so he goes after this person, and they're running over rooftops, and eventually the person takes out a teleportation crystal, and boom, they're gone. Mm -hmm. And so Kiri's... Kirito's like, dang it, I lost him. And so he comes back, and first of all, Asuna is like, why did you run out like that? That was insane. What is your Also, damage? did you catch him? <laughs> <laughs> so that was stupid. Why would you? Oh, well, okay, did anything good come out of it? No, you're stupid. <laughs> you're dumb. You're did you dumb. succeed? You're still dumb. And he's like, no, the person teleported away. And we have poor Schmidt, who's sitting here, I kind of really liked, I mean, it was terrible because, you know, the poor guy is th going through a lot of trauma right now. But I kind of loved that as he's just having this mental breakdown, thinking this ghost is going down and tracking down their guild members one by one and killing them. It's Chris Oda's ghost. <laughs> and he just starts laughing hysterically. And as Asuna and Kirito uh, keep talking, you, if you can okay. listen for it. <laughs> just like that. No, and it was funnier than that. Oh, anyway. oh, oh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you can just hear him laughing maniacally, like in the background, because he's just losing it. And then what kind of weirded me out is we, we cut to um, Asuna and Kirito later without Schmidt. Like, they it's just watched his friend get assassinated. Listen, it was time and they for sandwiches. Him. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get your priorities in check, and you need to understand that sometimes. <laughs> Hey, 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 oh, I sandwiches. am the first person <laughs> to put, this I am is the, exactly I why will I need always this book. put food first. <laughs> we both need this book, okay? Sandwiches. Sandwiches. <laughs> sandwiches. But it the just, it boggled my, my mind band. because it always bothers me in scary movies when they're like, they're after this person, but then they we're just, just going to leave them alone now. Right. Well, like, we know they, they're bad detective. Like, even in the last episode, they were like, oh my gosh, Yoko's in danger. Um, we're gonna go over here. You stay here in the inn. <laughs> you stay and... here alone you by know, yourself. You know what, Let's get some just air in this room. Just open right? right? up the window. window. You know, they could have at least left her with Agil to be like, "This is a big, strong guy. Why don't you just hang out?" Yeah, with cool. they could have easily. It would have taken literally probably about five minutes to teleport down over to the fiftieth floor uh, and like just leave her in Agil's shop and be like, "Agil, you have an axe. You are big and strong, and you don't take any crap from and anybody. You're right? Shiny. You watch her." <laughs> We've already. Is Established that Kirito is not the smartest protagonist on the planet or in the game. Yeah. But at this point, we did have to have our characters carrying the idiot ball in order for the plot to continue. Exactly. It's true. But Which it sucks, but that's life. It's true. But it just kind of bothered it made me laugh because I'm like, okay, yeah, just leave the next murder victim alone, why don't you? I, guys, it was true. clue. It was like a really bad thing of clue. It was just, it was, this is getting serious. Yeah. But <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, but and then it Anyway, so they skip ahead, and what was the next scene? They were they're, they were they're discussing sandwiches. Oh, the sandwiches. Uh, you know, they're they're trying they're bouncing ideas back and forth, and that's when Asuna hands him a sandwich. She's like, "I figured we wouldn't have time, to, you know, for a proper lunch, so, so I packed this this and morning." I made it. And yeah, that, that's eat when it before it gives out because right. evidently yeah. items only last for so long. Yeah, and once food their durability there's, is there's there's a concept in this game called object durability. So basically items in this world have either an expiration date or like they 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 wear that, down they exactly. have their own hp yeah. essentially yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's very interesting it's so, so she hands my sandwich it. can die i know <laughs> <laughs> and it looks just like when somebody dies in the game because it just erupts into blue little polygons <laughs> so she sandwich. says dumb things as Kirito's yeah. want to do. You can make a career making sandwiches if this whole second in command thing doesn't work out for you. <laughs> she smacks him one, he drops the sandwich, it disappears. And, and he drops to his knees. And so sad. I really <laughs> liked this scene because you know, when you go back and look at it again, you, it's clearly the wheels are turning in Kirito's head. But the first time you watch it, you think he's just mourning his sandwich. Just, I think it was logical. Like, <laughs> he was on his okay. knees for like 10, 15 <laughs> seconds it, just sitting it there. Might, it's like, it might be because I, I might be because I was a fat kid and I would have done that. <laughs> or maybe because most of my favorite anime growing up with Dragon Ball Z and Goku or Sailor Moon yeah. with like Usagi, right. yeah. uh, they would have done that too. So. <laughs> They've been like, my sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
version. We're not but, mourning the know, sandwich. We're having Asuna's a mind like, palace what's moment. wrong? And he ho- raises his hand up to like be like, to be like, I'm thinking. But again, at the time, it was like, I'm mourning my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't mean, talk to me right I now. I need a moment. minute. But as we see, the the wheels were actually turning as he's figured something out in terms of this object durability thing. But we don't get it quite yet. In the meantime, we cut to the 19th floor, which is the Hill of Cross, which is probably the creepiest looking floor we've <laughs> oh, yeah. seen so far. Yeah. It reminds me of a scene from like a uh, never ending story, like the swamp oh, kind of scene. Oh, swamp of sadness. It, yeah. It that's reminded what it was. me one time <laughs> was I was in high school <laughs> and our bus broke down on our way to like a field trip out of town and it broke down and there was fog and it was just all these rows of trees and we had oh, to lovely. sit there on the side of the road waiting for another bus. So that's what this reminded me of because you that's exactly got what stuck it stuck in Silent Hill. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> it this it's the looks Silent like Hill floor. This is the Silent Hill floor because they're just these bare trees. Trees and fog everywhere. Mm. But we see, yes, we see Schmidt standing over um, what looks like a plaque in front of this tree. And I I couldn't read the plaque. I don't know if it was like a plaque, uh, like a specific memorial to Griselda, or if it was just kind of more of a generic one. Um, But I think it it was Griselda's. But yeah, he was definitely talking to Griselda, and he's begging her for forgiveness because he never intended anything bad to happen. Mm -hmm. And this is a guy who genuinely believes her ghost is out to get him. I like to pretend that this is Schmidt from New Girl. (laughs) Like I keep thinking of like the. Oh, and just like, <laughs> it's just, if you think of it in a weary, but anyway. <laughs> My thought was like, if you think someone's ghost is after you, why go to their grave? Like that's the where they're closest but, to the spirit. Well, like their body's to, there. Like the body isn't there technically. You know it's a memorial because her body wouldn't exist right. anymore. Yeah. But I mean, I guess in a way it's kind of like in Japan. You know, they go to shrines and they have like they give offerings of food and incense and flowers. So maybe it was just kind of his way of just like. I mean, even here now, you break down and you cry in front of the grave, and you're like, "Hey, I'm well, sorry." That, and right. he's he's begging for forgiveness, and if he's going to try to appease whatever supernatural force exactly. this is, this is the place to do it. I'm not yeah, saying it was enough. smart, and yeah. I'm not saying that I would do that if I was in a horror movie, but. You can understand the guy's reasoning. You yeah. can understand the logic behind it. But of course, he doesn't have the option to leave this horror movie. Yeah, yes. right. he, he it's going to keep following well, him no matter where he goes. He can go to the freaking. They could have gotten the dang thing, put it in the field of flower floor. <laughs> they didn't have to go to like the swamp nest monster area to like. That's this true. Is a nice place for her floor memorial. Forty seven. I think go it was forty seven. They got yeah. flowers. Okay, there's like people to happy. How poet. long ago? Bury did, me there. How long ago did she die? Floor forty seven might not have been unlocked at that oh, no. point. Of course. No, well, but anyway. I'm sorry. Six I'm applying months. logic to your joke. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very pretty floor. That's yes. the long and short of what we're saying. Anyway, <laughs> so we um, we have him, you know, begging her for forgiveness when all of a sudden we get, tell me. Like, oh, really? As he's really? saying he's sorry. And oh, really? As And he looks behind him because there was this noise. And it's just a little rabbit scurrying across. But then in true horror movie fashion, as he breathes a sigh of relief and turns back around, <laughs> boom, there is a figure standing in a dark cloak right in front of him, holding Guilty Thorn. You know, the, the how, actually, yeah, was it Guilty Thorn? Um, I think because so. Yeah, Thorn? I think so. How did they get the that thing? from Agio? I mean, uh, Grimlock could have forged another one. That's true. One, they could have done... That's probably what it was. It yeah. was probably multiple versions of this um, sword. Because otherwise, I don't... I, I, either that or... Or, 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 the, or this ghost is just really crafty. Or right. the artist screwed up. <laughs> or that. Well, well, so but basically, carrying this, this uh, <laughs> ba- basically, what looks to be the spirit of Griselda is brandishing the sword, saying, "Tell me what you did to me," and that's when we have Schmidt break down, and this ghostly figure is joined by another ghostly figure, also in a black cloak, and that's when he's Schmidt is like, Grimlock, oh my gosh, you're dead too. I didn't know you were dead! Yeah, <laughs> and that's when he just breaks down and admits that after they had decided what to do with the ring as a guild, um, he had a crystal in his, um, I believe it was in his pouch or something like that, with instructions on it saying to put it next to Griselda's door so that this unknown person could get in and that he would get a cut of the profit from the ring. 
And seeing as how Schmidt was one of the people who wanted to sell the ring and split the funds between everybody else, he decided to go ahead and follow through with these instructions. Right. He <laughs> he claims that he had no idea that Griselda would get hurt mm. or that, you know, and he had no intention that she would die. And that he didn't hit And her. he didn't know who left the note. Yeah. Right. Which it was again, not signed. He didn't have any idea. He he might not have bore her any ill will, but it's like, really, dude, what did you think was going to happen? Yeah. yeah. Like, you get this mysterious note. Like, do you think this is somebody? If it was somebody on your team, they'd be honest with you. They wouldn't do well, this, like, anonymous not person. As we, necessarily. Not necessarily, as we come to find out later. Yeah. But. but anyway, and so um, they they pull back their cloaks, and it's revealed that this is Yoko and, Kla- and Kynes. I almost called him Klein again. <laughs> I keep Klein wanting to call everywhere. him Klein. <laughs> Klein is everywhere. But um, it's Yoko and Kynes who we thought died mm. this past episode and that's when we cut back to Kirito um, and Asuna and that's when Kirito's explaining they're actually alive. Yeah, and, um, it's, and it's really fun it's really interesting too because you know Again, it's very logical, and it's, again, the sad, the sacrifice of the sandwich. But, you know, he goes into explaining that... Like, he, nobody died, we only think we saw them We only die. saw right. what we wanted to see, and then all the viewers are at home, oh, that's why it's called the illusion, whatever that title was. <laughs> Illusionary, Illusionary Avenger. Avenger. Illusionary Avenger, yes. Which would be an awesome superhero name. Marvel yeah. branching out. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but basically, yeah, so what they did is they basically just were using these teleportation crystals, and th- the sword was only sticking in the armor, not through him. And then as the armor, they were just looking at the HP of their items, and just at the right moment, they would use the teleportation crystals to just poof, and it looks like they Which, died. And Yoko yeah. had her back to them the whole time. Mm-hmm. They never saw her back. And so, so that yeah. dagger was in there the whole time, and she's just watching her armor like, oh, time yeah. to die. And you have to hand it to her, you know. She she took a you know a dive out a window and landed on her face, right. you know, to no, get the full effect. She didn't land. Did she? <laughs> she, didn't land. <laughs> she landed. Ouch! So some give actor. yeah, give yeah. the girl some credit. <laughs> she really commits to the craft. Um, but so um, basically, they they realized okay, this is how this effect was pulled off. I'm sorry, I just had like this mental image of like her in the hospital with a nerve cure on, and as she lands, her whole body just goes like, <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like how it continues. But and just, then, <laughs> just picture it. Like, and I'm then as she teleports changing. away, she's Honey, like, worth it. Our <laughs> no, that was, uh, yeah. or even is worse. Is she coming back? Oh. Or even worse, the nurse is like changing her catheter at the time or something. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, now You're we've welcome. gone there. <laughs> That's a hilarious mental image. But anyway, so we cut back to Yoko and Kynes and um, and Schmidt, um, and basically they're kind of clearing the air a little bit. Um, you know, it's one of, again. He he bore her no ill will. It wasn't the best thing to do. When all of a sudden, in the middle of their talk. Um, Schmidt falls over. He's paralyzed. Um, he's been stabbed with this little what looks, looks like, like a status dagger, effect dagger, yeah. and he's now paralyzed. And, and that- they turn around and they see three people in the scariest hoods that you've ever <laughs> seen. And this is where we take the turn from murder mystery into straight up horror slash thriller because we get introduced, ladies and gentlemen, to Laughing Coffin, the <laughs> murder <laughs> guild. Their, Their entire <laughs> purpose is to be hired to kill people. And we watch this We're together. We're not even just hire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, they just do it. They just do it. We watched this together last week, and last week for us was Game of Thrones episode 9, Mikasa's <laughs> backstory and attack on Titan, and this episode. And I freaked out the worst over this. <laughs> this was worse than Game of Thrones and Attack on Titan for me. Because uh, I watched the Abridged series, and they name drop Laughing Coffin twice as a joke. So I'm like, oh, it's kind of a joke, because all I know is the Abridged series. I kept series. telling you they were real. Up. I had I had heard that they were real. I I had heard that they were a guild of some sort. That they were in an antagonistic group. I didn't know they were straight up murder yeah, guild. And I was spoiler free. <laughs> so I'm just like. So uh, this this was less of a murder mystery episode for me and more of an introduction to laughing coffin. It really was. I I don't know if they'll come back. I hope they do because I'm I sure love the idea of a group like this being out there oh, in yeah. this world. Yeah. And on a less um, traumatizing note, it did answer my question about whether they can have status effects in this game. Yes, very much so, <laughs> unfortunately. 
And so we have these three people um, basically cornering Yoko Kynes and Schmidt, who is now paralyzed. And they're just so giddy because they're like, look, we got a member of the Holy Dragon Alliance. It must be our birthday. (laughs) You know, something like that. And so they're just kind of toying with them when all of a sudden we have somebody riding up on a horse in true... Can he be more cowboy? (laughs) (laughs) The horse rears up dramatically... And Kirito falls off right. of his rare. And I highly, ah. I highly recommend for anybody who isn't following us on Twitter, and we will go over our Twitter handles at the end of the episode, but please, please check out Tari's page because he did this <laughs> beautiful Photoshop of uh, Kirito Cowboy. Wearing, uh, Cowboy. 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 It's one of my favorite things, and I really wish that we had gotten a full shot of him actually on, on the, the horse, horse so that we could do another one. Yeah. But because Kir... And it was like... You know, no, Kiri chose the white knight in a lot of situations. Mm-hmm. He really didn't look like it this time <laughs> because he just falls over. And compared to these full-grown men, we really see how short he oh, is yeah. and everything like that. And it's really funny that the black swordsman member of the assault group, compared to, like, you know, full-grown men. <laughs> Where did the horse come from? Is it that you could have teleported in? You, you, you know found what? a horse? I hope that he you have an ocarina horse. and that you just use it. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, he's just like, wait. And the horse will just ride up like That's Legend this of Zelda. He's like, shop. Asuna, 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 shut up for a second. I need you to shut up. Hold on. I'm going to see if this works. <laughs> <laughs> And then also the horse just comes in and it's like, what? Um, I think <laughs> How do you even do that? I honestly think maybe the animators are just like, look, I, I don't, I'm never going to be able to draw one. I just really, you guys need, you need me to put a horse in the game. Just, or I quit. But I don't get to draw a horse. And then that's what happened. And um, so Kirito rides up and he basically tells this group, um, Laughing Coffin, he's like, look, the assault team is on their way here. Do you really want to like stick around and fight the assault team? Mm-hmm. And they stand off for a second uh, when finally Laughing Coffin decides that it's not worth the trouble. And they pick up their stuff and go. Mm. And that's where we. weapons are like. Yeah. A short handled cleaver, which is really, really creepy in the close up shots and not good when you're fighting anyone with yeah, any sort of range. Probably weaponry. not yeah. good for melee combat it's with a bunch of members of the assault group. Yeah. I just kept yeah. on thinking of Barry the Butcher from Full Metal Alchemist. I, Full Metal oh, Alchemist, yes. yeah. Yeah. Very much a, a similar vibe to that. It's, it's, that was, which is one of the exactly most disturbing it. things I've seen in anime. Oh, it's mm-hmm. one of the so. most beautifully disturbing. Exactly. I love that entire I kill series. people because it's, it's fun. <laughs> and then we have Laughing Coffin, which is three people, one of whom is wearing a human skull. <laughs> Not, we, yeah. Yeah, no, we got the top half, <laughs> yeah. and then we have the jawbone along his. He's, which is probably just an item skull. because when people die, they evaporate <laughs> in this game. So it's not yes, an actual skull. But you skull. chose your character customization to be. <laughs> Tattered hood. Bad human people are out there. Mask, <laughs> bad people are out there. Creepy people. Bad. Bad people. people are out there. They're even playing online games. You so when you when you pop people. in WoW tonight, be careful. You get worried <laughs> about people on the internet, and then there's these guys. <laughs> but anyway, so they decide to pick up their stuff and go, and that's when Kirito. We we flash back to Kirito uh, and Asuna in the in, and he's explaining how they figured out. Turns out it actually was Grimlock, uh, according to his deductive reasoning. Last week. We were talking about how we didn't want it to be that straightforward, but there were more twists to this than we anticipated. Right. Um, and then they the, flash back to they were talking about items, oh, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. The and meeting. and and you know, I, and at first when I was I was like watching, I was like, "What are you talking about marriage for all of a sudden? Like, what do you slow down, slow down, chick? <laughs> that escalated quick." But anyway, <laughs> yeah, know, we got Asuna and like, Kirito uh, talking about marriage, and when you get married in Sword Art Online, your um, items you're, merge. Exactly, yeah. you get shared inventory. So when one spouse dies, um, very much like if they will it in in real life, all of their remaining possessions go to the surviving spouse. Well, even if they don't yeah. will it, like all, it's, automatic. it's automatic. Yeah, it's just automatic. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking like in terms of yeah. real life, like you have a will and testament. Oh, yeah. It's, it's I'm not just like applying like logic to this. <laughs> <laughs> this <is a> anyway. problem. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so basically, Grimlock would get the ring if Griselda died. And so, like, that's where we have our main suspect. Yeah. And they were just saying to themselves, they're like, you know, he didn't, he didn't need to, like, they, the guy who killed her, whoever killed her, 
didn't need to get the items. He wouldn't even have access to the items because when she explodes, the items aren't just gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's a better for yeah. Yeah. She right, yeah. They explode, people. <laughs> but and they explode to all these like different like you know colors and stuff. The items aren't just going to be left around. It's going to automatically be in Grimlock's inventory. Exactly. So he She's would very be clever. I mean, props to yeah. the sociopath. But yes, very, <laughs> yeah. Very, yeah. Props to Carrie Toe for using his brain. Actually, yes. it was <laughs> it was actually kind of cool to see him use deductive reasoning. Like like yeah. this. He um, just misses that sandwich. He wants to avenge <laughs> it. We, I would too. Can we talk about that moment when uh, Asuna is talking about how romantic that is? And yes. Romantic and her, pragmatic. Yes. Pragmatic. So how many times have you been married? <laughs> right? Uh, you're lucky you're in the same thing. She would have murdered you. But you were the one who said it would be romantic and plastic. <laughs> yeah. pragmatic, and she's like, pragmatic. It means practical. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if this isn't maybe foreshadowing because... I I, I, <laughs> Stop it. I, 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 the episode you mean? Spoiler free. I don't know. Spoiler free. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not there. saying anything. All I'm saying is, while I was sick, <laughs> I happened to watch ahead a little bit in the series, and I'm not saying anything. Please don't. I'm uh, not. I, I, but I, I, I can't help but things. wonder if that's foreshadowing because they're talking. You know, she's talking about how it's a very practical thing right. um, to have just everything out in the open, or just like to that. get married and sort of online like it's a practical thing. Yeah, it's not <laughs> even like it's romantic, but at the same time, it's like it just it makes sense in terms of like the context of this world. Exactly. Um, Anyway, but talking about this is what gets Kirito thinking about the item and shared storage and how Grimlock would have the ring. And so, um, basically, he's explaining this to them, and he's like, well, you said Grimlock didn't want to have any part in this when you begged him. And they're like, yeah, we, we had to beg him to get them to forge the weapons with us. And turns out Kirito is like, well... Him not wanting, not wanting to to just want to let Griselda rest. That wasn't his motivation. He just didn't he, want you digging around. He didn't mm -hmm. want you guys making a scene and raising eyebrows about you know player killers in the safe zone. So he, but ultimately he saw this as an opportunity to wipe out anybody else who knew about the ring who would who would go around causing trouble. This way, you know, kind of everything would get swept under the rug and everything, all the loose ends would get tied up. Really and everyone neat. already. Thinks thinks they're dead. Right. And he, well, except for him, and then which means that he would be the only possible person that could call up the Laughing Coffin and have knowing that they're all going to be in this spot because they've explained their entire plan to Grimlock mm -hmm. about how they're going to get the confession recorded, where yeah. they're going to be. So it exactly was, like again, smart sociopath. Exactly, and Very. so we we have Asuna coming up. She's captured Grimlock, who was watching like off in the distance. Doing all God he knows needed what. was popcorn. <laughs> yeah. And and Seriously. so she comes up with him in tow, and he's like, greetings, friends. Yeah. Like, long time no see. You know, sorry I just tried to murder you and all. Um, but they basically go, like, why? Why would you do this? You know, is it for the money? Like, you thought it was good enough to kill, you know, your in-game wife, Griselda, for the money? And, they like, were, and he was just and like, he was like, really? Yeah. The like, money? Like, no, 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 no. Griselda, I, I had to kill her while we were still in this game because she's actually my real wife and because she's happy now and I don't <laughs> like that yeah, yeah. this yeah. Was, that was kind of the worst. her real name is Yuko and apparently they were married in real life and she was a very she was a very Stepford wife she was very submissive they never had an argument mm -hmm. um, which and he, is the sign of an extremely unhealthy relationship <laughs> but when they got stuck in this game she found her inner strength and she was more alive and, and happy. free and happy and she became the leader of you know this guild she she was taking charge and he was the one who felt like he slinked oh, back yeah he was crippled by his fear of playing in this game and to see her you know rise to the occasion and again find her inner strength he's like she's not the woman i fell in love with you know like and so uh, and if, if i, I couldn't, couldn't have, have my her. yuko i would settle for the memory of her it's almost um, as good yeah and it's like we're watching this and it's like that is the most disgusting thing i've heard from this series yeah and, and um i think 
And when they call him out on it, he's like, you'll understand when you're in love. And Asuna's the one who, who calls him out. She's like, that's not what love is. Yeah. You stopped loving her when you became possessive. And like, can we, can we pause a moment and just, yeah. can we just reflect though? I want to just point out that the reason we are absolutely disgusted with all these things that have been happening is because there's a lot of stuff happening like this nowadays. And some like media it's and true. stuff. It's true. It rings so too strike, close to it, home. Yeah, it's striking oh, yeah. a chord way too much. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, and again, and Asuna, like you said, she stands up and she's just like, you stopped loving her when you got possessive and stuff. But for all we know, and I kind of rolled my eyes at this, I was like, bro was always possessive. Exactly. Right. Bro yeah. never actually loved her. I don't and know why I keep calling him bro. He loved, he he loved the out. idea of yeah. this, um, you know, perfect Stepford wife and it's so creepy. Yeah. yeah. And the second he thought that he might lose her because she was happy and... And actually strong, and yes. yes. Instead of going, she, she hey, let's being. talk about things. Let's, you know, obviously our relationship has moved on to another level. Let's let's talk about it. No, she's like, dead. nope, dead. Yeah, and then because the, you know what a nice guy. Oh. But the thing uh, that I also rolled my eyes about <laughs> is just how how quickly he was to be like, what have I done? And it's like. <sighs> Like, I would have really, I liked the episode. It was a great episode because we saw a lot of things in it that made us kind of, mm. wow, this is horrifying. And it was, like, interesting. But and people like twists. this don't show remorse. Exactly. It, and was so. too, it was too quick for him. Like, I kind of wish he just started laughing and something, and then they took him off somewhere. I, I kind of, you know. I oh, go think ahead. he was suffering from some massive cognitive dissonance. There may have been some part of him that did love her, even if the possessiveness overshadowed it there. There may have been some part that loved her mister felt really, really guilty about causing the death of another human being. But there's and too, so there's too much plotting himself, and planning, you know. But then he tells himself, oh, I did it for this reason. I did, I did it, it because love. I love her. And Ugh. then he convinces himself, but it's very fragile. And the second Asana goes, <laughs> no. That's enough to break it. Yeah, eh. Maybe. cognitive dissonance. But like, anyway, or poor writing. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> We've never that, seen that in this well, series before. Sorry, um, go ahead. No, I mean, uh, I feel like if it was something that he could have like snapped out of, like it would have been more of a crime of passion. But like this took like months. To, yeah. To, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because it was a six month he gap had, between the things. Right? When somebody goes to laughing coffin, you know, <laughs> <laughs> months, <laughs> after the the is, <laughs> months after the fact to find out just to cover up what he did and to kill his friends, not only his wife, but to be like, okay, well, because if he was really that guilty about killing his wife, he wouldn't be like, pop, pop, pop. Okay, all my friends are now dead too. Like you would, you be no, like, yeah, no, we're writing on this one. Still but murder. that's yeah. that's the only thing that I think really kind of eh, this then, episode. Speaking of his friends, Schmidt has recovered from his paralysis and they all get up and they're like Kirito with all due respect this is our problem now like we'll we'll take care of this you two have done enough and so they go and they pick up Grimlock and walk away and you know they they say thank you and go I was like, are they going to murder him? Or are they <laughs> taking him off to jail? Yeah, sure. Part of the implication is either rehabilitation or jail. Yeah. But it sure looks like they're going to take him off and execute him. <laughs> <laughs> take him behind the chemical sheds and shoot him. And then we get a little part in, you know, the extension of what foreshadowing what will happen with Kirito and As Asuna's uh, relationship. Because she's just like, hey, friend me. You should friend me. Yeah. And that's something that, like, it... It's kind of adorable um, because he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Like that's that's moving really fast. And she's like, we don't have to form a party together. Like <laughs> you should make some friends while you're here. And it's it's a very player. nice scene. I don't have friends. <laughs> <laughs> How do I but friend? And it was actually really funny because half of the uh, one of the ways they were able to find Yorko, you know, where they were, is because she was still in Asuna's friend list. Exactly. So it's great that you know it's really funny to see that. E Kirito had to ask Asuna because he doesn't friend people. He doesn't have <laughs> friends. Um, but you know, um, the, as the sun is zero. yeah, <laughs> as the sun is coming up, she's like, you know what? We should be friends. Like you know, think about it. Over food, it's okay. But then he stops her, and she's like, what, what's going on? And he points over to the tree, his jaw hanging down, and we see um, what looks like Griselda's ghost. Yep, which. And then we for look one, again, for and one. she's no longer there. Right. Here was Wait, my problem with that. They wouldn't know what she looks exactly. like. <laughs> it's like the end of Star Wars when uh, Darth Vader's ghost is there, and it's like no one's seen him without his thing. Like, who, how, do, how do you know? How, how would do Luke you know? know who that is? <laughs> it's just one of those things. Process of elimination. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like you died as a, as a white guy, and now you're the, the not white guy with white paint on your face? Like, <laughs> what happened to you? But, no, like, it's the same thing. 
but at the same time, the long cloak, they kept on mentioning the cloak, and I guess, you know, put two and two well, together. and I guess it's possible that they could have showed pictures of the Golden Apple Guild Probably. as a whole. Yeah. Um, Dramaticness. Yeah. But oh, it's just creepy, it was, and they have no context It was a for very it. eerie end, because it was like, well... Is it possible to have a ghost in Sword Art Online? <laughs> anyway, that pretty much wraps up um, the time that we have. Do you guys have any other thoughts about the episode? I am really sad that my it's a random person who doesn't have anything to do with it theory didn't pan out. <laughs> we did get Laughing Coffin out of it, but I'm kind of sad that my ridiculous pet theory died. <laughs> yeah. You guys? Uh, yeah. No. Nope. I'm yep. good. Looking forward <laughs> to the next episode. Yeah, we're looking forward to the next one. We get back to the plot. Katie, where can the people find you? The people can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Kiaxe. That's K-I-A-X-E-T. I'm also on the Attack on Titan panel. Liz. Hey, guys. You can find me at Lizzie Maui on Twitter and Instagram, L-I-Z-Z-Y-M-A-W-Y. I'm also going to be starting this week on Thursday, uh, Dominion. And on Ooh. Sunday after this show, I'm going to be starting uh, The Musketeers. Nice. Yay. Tari. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Tari. J, that's T-A-U-R-I-J-A-Y and I'll also be on the Dominion panel so check what it up? out. Awesome. Yeah. That'll be fun. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the Menguin. that's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-U-I-N. I am also on the Attack on Titan panels on Sunday nights. Again, if you like what we do here, please go to iTunes, give us a five, five star rating and leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Nice. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this week's uh, um, Sword Art Online panel. <laughs> uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thank from executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz TV. Over 9,000! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs> <laughs>